and have probably stolen my thunder. Um, thank you to Ray, who made an announcement this morning. It's my great honour and privilege to now be the chair of Riverina LLS. It's a role which I'm very excited to be pursuing. Today, though, I'm speaking to you because I'm a primary producer. I'm a farmer. I don't actually live very far from here, just out the road here. At home, at the moment, we're right in the middle of sowing season. Things are pretty busy at home. Uh, we've just finished sowing our uh, barley, canola's in the ground and up, and wheat's next. So my very glamorous job on the weekend is to head down the paddock and underneath the paddock trees, try and find all the baling twine, which is in the way of the cedar, and get it out of the way. So for a minute, I want you to picture baling twine down the paddock, which has been used and which I had to move, like this. That is what natural capital and carbon accounting looks like to farmers just like me. It's confusing, it's complex, it's a lot of conflicting advice, and it can be very, very overwhelming. What I'm hoping to do today is try and find an end in this baling twine and pull it out a little bit and talk to you about how farmers like me might get started on this natural capital journey. So I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about why farmers like me should care, who are the farmers that look like me, and what are the top four things that I think farmers like me should do right now. So if I start with the why, we've actually had a lot of speakers today talk to us about why farmers should care about this space. For me, I always think about that expression, it's the carrot and the stick. So some of what we're talking about today is an incentive or an advantage in doing something in this space. So for the mixed farmers like me in the room, you who grow canola, you've probably signed an, hang on, acronym, uh, International Sustainability and Carbon Certification Document, which last harvest gave us a premium of $15 a tonne for our canola. I think the harvest before we got $10 extra per tonne for our canola, which is not an insignificant amount. Farmers are quite accustomed to this idea of signing up to some criteria for the, the benefit of, um, in this case, an extra $15 a tonne. The other bucket I see is the stick, which is that if we don't get on board with this, there are going to be consequences. And the consequences might be a lack of access to certain markets, unless you can demonstrate what you've actually done in this space. Thinking about this before today, I was thinking about where the banks sit in all of this, and I'm really heartened by everything that I heard Alana say a little bit earlier. Because up until now, I wasn't quite sure about whether banks were really in the carrot business or whether they were in the stick business. I'd actually like Alana to give me a discount of at least 2% on my borrowings. That'd be really great. But I actually think it's going to be business as usual for banks and that our, our annual reviews, as well as having to show them our budget and our financials, we're actually going to have to um, have a conversation about what we're actually doing on farm from a sustainability perspective. And I think it might be, become business as usual. The advice that I'm going to give today, the who are we targeting, the advice that I'm going to give today is for farmers who are like me, who are just in the midst of dipping their toe into the water. Now, I acknowledge that in this room, of course all the other farmers in this room are the early adopters, the ones who are way out in front and for whom this is all very, very well known. For you and for everybody else in the room who's part of industry or government or what I like to call ag adjacent, my challenge to you today is to think about the farmers like me that we need to shift into action because it's shifting that movable middle that's actually going to create impact on the ground. So the suggestions that I make to you today may be they're for your customers, for your clients or for the people that you work with. So here we go. My top four tips for what farmers like me should do right now. The first thing I think farmers need to do is to learn the lingo. If you speak to any farmers, the first comment is, how much rain did you get? Do you think we're going to get any on Saturday? What's the season looking like? 
you might, farmers also have a language all of their own that people outside the industry don't necessarily understand, like how many sheep did they draw for tomorrow in Wagga? And it's the same with this space, natural capital, is the lingo doesn't necessarily come naturally to people who, don't, uh, who haven't been exposed to that kind of language. So my top tip for those producers is to look for some of the things that will teach you some of the language. So I, lucky enough, I got to do a LLS TOCAL online learning module. Um, it was a really good um, uh, introductory learn the lingo. For any of you who know a lot more about it, it's actually a really good to go into the deep dive of all of the YouTube clips and further reading that's part of that module and I can recommend it. All of industries have some kind of um, learning modules available, and I'm most familiar with red meat, so sheep and beef, and I know a lot about what MLA is doing in this space, and I can recommend to you their Carbon 101 and Carbon in Action e-learning modules, which are on the My MLA website, as a really good place to get your head around the language of, and, and dip your toe in the water of what this is all about. The second thing that I think farmers should do is have a go at a carbon account even if it's not perfect. And it won't be perfect because um, it is a little bit daunting when you first look at that SB GAF tool that Richard Eckhart at the University of Melbourne put together. But you've got to have a go because you need to get your head around the kinds of information that you need to have at your fingertips. The things that are relevant and perhaps the things that are irrelevant. What I learnt from doing the um, MLA Quick Start Carbon Calculator was that there was a lot of things missing from that calculator and there's some of those calculators which are still very much in a development phase. I personally am looking for the, another acronym, uh, Agricultural Innovation Australia's Mixed Farming um, tool, which was announced at Evoke Ag in Perth in February, as a potential solution to the complexity of mixed farming and the joining more than one enterprise together. So for me, that would be red meat and grains. Number three thing that I think farmers like me should do is critically assess their landscape, to have a look in their own backyard at what they've actually got. Now I put my hand up to be a part of the Riverina LLS, Natural Capital Profile Project. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, today I was handed this beautiful document with this lovely tree of mine on the front. Um, thanks to the team, they've given me a bit of an assessment of my farm's natural capital. And it's given me some signposts to the things that I might look at. Um, both on the ground and in terms of environmental markets in the future. And it's something that I think we should all do, which is have a critical look at what's at our, um, in our backyards. As a producer, we tend to look at the productive areas of the farm, and this is an opportunity to look at the areas which we might have once considered to be the unproductive areas. The fourth thing that I want to do, uh, I think farmers like me should do, is decide where they're going to store this data. Um, it was really great that Katie told me that it's going to you know, um, align with my farm accounting software. That's absolutely fabulous. Um, because people are going to start asking me for my data and it'd be really good if I had it in a really handy place. All of these sustainability frameworks rely on the metrics and the data being recorded and I can guarantee you that it will be farmers like me that need to supply those metrics. So that's it from me. I just hope that I've given you an idea about why we should care and what we should care about. And if there's any smart person in the room who can work out what I should be doing with my baling twine, my net wrap and my silage wrap to be more farm waste efficient, that would be really great. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lisa. It's always good to have a, a landholder's perspective and with the silage wrap, have a chat to local councils in this region, the Canberra Region Joint Organisation, have a circular economy strategy to look at what to do with that wrap.